Today is Tuesday, June 28th. We'll tell you about another high-profile decision that split the Supreme Court, this time over religion at a public school. And fallout from last week's ruling over abortion. New lawsuits are now being fought in the states. Also, NATO's latest action in response to the war in Ukraine. Plus, where voters are heading to the polls today, where millions of Americans can expect inflation relief payments, and how Drake is giving the Beatles a run for their money on the Billboard charts. We'll tell you those stories and more news to know. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The lawmakers investigating the January 6th Capitol attack called for a last-minute urgent hearing because of what they called recently obtained evidence. So they're unexpectedly getting back together today. But so far, the panel has not given any other details, like what evidence they plan to present or who might testify. Already, the committee has held five hearings this month, laying out the findings of its nearly year-long investigation. But it wasn't scheduled to hold any more sessions until next month. So the fact that today's hearing was so sudden and secretive has stirred up a lot of interest on Capitol Hill. It starts at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Even with Roe v. Wade overturned, abortion rights advocates are headed back to court. They're now suing individual states that have moved to ban most abortions in the wake of last week's Supreme Court decision. Even though the high court ruling gave states the power to regulate abortions, advocates say banning the procedure might violate state constitutions, that the laws go against state court precedent, and that they're overly vague. At least that's why Utah and Louisiana are now being sued. And yesterday, judges in those two states decided the abortion bans cannot be enforced while the lawsuits get sorted out in the courts. So for now, at least, women can still get the procedure in Utah and Louisiana. New abortion restrictions are also being challenged in Arizona, Florida, Idaho, Kentucky, Mississippi, and Texas. Although many of the state's leaders are promising to fight these lawsuits and enforce the laws that were already passed in state legislatures. To be continued. The U.S. Supreme Court weighed in on another hot-button issue this week, religious freedom. The high court ruled that a public high school football coach from Washington had the right to pray with students, something the school district tried to stop him from doing. And once again, the ruling came down six to three, with all the conservative-leaning justices in the majority. The school district told justices that parents complained their children on the team felt compelled to participate in prayer. So the district felt that as a public employee, the coach was violating the separation of church and state. But most of the justices sided with the coach, saying the school should not be censoring or suppressing his views since he has religious freedom and free speech rights. The Supreme Court still has more high-profile cases to get to this term on issues like immigration, environmental protection, Native American lands, and more. The latest decisions are expected to be announced today. The world's largest defense alliance is meeting this week in Spain. NATO's 2022 summit is underway. And as you might expect, the top item on the agenda is the war in Ukraine. Already ahead of the summit, NATO announced it's expanding the number of troops it keeps at the ready. Instead of 40,000, there will now be 300,000 who will be able to react quickly to emergencies. And NATO Secretary General made it clear that's in response to Russia's invasion in Ukraine. This week, leaders are also going to talk about securing NATO's eastern boundary, funding a new assistance package for Ukraine, and coming up with a strategy for the years ahead. Meanwhile, Russia is showing no signs of backing down in this war. Just yesterday, a Russian missile hit a crowded shopping mall in central Ukraine. Ukrainian President Zelensky said there were more than a thousand people inside who did not pose any kind of military threat. Most people were able to get out, but at least 16 people died and about 60 more were hurt. Yesterday also saw deadly attacks in other Ukrainian cities in the north and east. At least three people died and dozens more were hurt when an Amtrak train went off the tracks yesterday. The passenger train was on the way to Chicago from Los Angeles when it crashed into a dump truck that was blocking a crossing in Missouri. That crash derailed eight train cars and two locomotives. Passengers had to crawl out of the windows. Others had to be life flighted to local hospitals. The National Transportation Safety Board and Federal Railroad Administration both have teams on the way to investigate exactly what happened and if the crash could have been prevented. Separately, a tractor trailer was found near an Air Force base in San Antonio, Texas. Local officials say 46 bodies were inside. Another 16 people found inside were rushed to the hospital. 
Authorities believe they were all migrants trying to get into the U.S. since cross-border smuggling and human trafficking have been problems in that area for a while. Today, a lot of eyes are on Illinois, Colorado, New York, Oklahoma, and Utah. All five states are holding primary elections, and there are quite a few current members of Congress whose jobs are on the line, like in Illinois. Two Republicans now in the U.S. House are going up against each other, and two Democrats are going up against each other, both because of redistricting. In Colorado, Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert has some competition from a Republican state senator who's looking to take her seat. Boebert is one of the most controversial and outspoken Republican members in the House, whereas her top Republican challenger is running on his record of bipartisanship. On to Oklahoma. Senator James Lankford is facing a primary test. He's one of the Senate's most conservative members, but has faced backlash from some fellow Republicans for voting to certify President Biden as the winner of the 2020 election. And today he's up against an evangelical pastor who has the backing of Trump's former national security advisor, Michael Flynn. There are also runoffs in Mississippi and South Carolina and a special election in Nebraska. All right, we have more news for you still coming up. But first, let's take a quick break for our sponsor, BetterHelp Online Therapy. We all know how powerful our brains are. They control everything we do. So why not treat our minds with the care they deserve? I've experienced it myself, that when I invest the time and effort into better understanding what's going on in my mind and how to make sure I'm caring for it properly, it has a positive impact on the way I experience all of life. I show up for my family better, I run my business better, and I take care of myself better. And part of that caring for my mind is through therapy. Having a professional to talk things out with is surprisingly helpful. And one convenient way to try therapy is through BetterHelp. It offers video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions. So you can be face-to-face -face on video if you want, or you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. And it's easy to switch and request a new therapist if you don't click with the first one right away. Plus, our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Newsworthy. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash Newsworthy. Inflation relief checks could be coming, at least for 23 million people in California. California's governor and state lawmakers have apparently come up with a budget deal. The governor says it'll designate $17 billion to help people pay for everything from gas to groceries. The checks would be sent as tax refunds and would be between $250 and $1,050 a household. They're kind of like the stimulus checks the federal government sent because they'll be based on income and household size. So, for example, a couple who brings in less than $150,000 a year and who has at least one child would get the max of $1,050. The higher the income, though, the less money. And no payments will be sent to individuals who make over $250,000 a year or couples making over $500,000 a year. The deal would also do a few more things, including help some people with rent and utility bills, and it will pause the state's diesel sales tax. So that would bring the cost of each gallon down about 23 cents. For now, this agreement for the state budget has not passed the legislature yet, but it is expected to. One local news station reports the refunds could start going out in October. Well, there's some good and bad news about ransomware affecting U.S. schools. Remember, ransomware is malicious software that can lock up computer networks until the victims pay a fee. So first, the bad news. A new study found ransomware attacks cost schools and colleges more than an estimated $3.5 billion last year in downtime alone. That's not even counting all the recovery costs trying to restore computers and update systems to prevent future attacks or the cost of the ransom if the schools chose to pay them. The researchers at Comparatech also found nearly a 1,000 schools and nearly a million students were impacted in 2021. At schools, these types of cyber attacks can take down key systems, shut down classrooms for days, and prevent teachers from accessing lesson plans and student data. But here's the good news. The number of attacks on schools, the number of students impacted, and the length and cost of downtime are actually all going down. In fact, there have been double-digit percentage declines from 2020 levels. Researchers say this shows schools are getting more prepared for these attacks and are better able to restore their systems. A new study found services like ride, scooter, and bike sharing are expected to grow twice as fast as traditional mass transit through 2030. Researchers say the trend will transform how people get around cities globally, and it has the potential to bring benefits for the climate, pollution, and the livability of cities. That's if these shared and digital options are powered by electricity from renewable sources. 
That said, choosing car sharing over public transportation could make traffic congestion worse. But more people have been making the switch. Researchers say the pandemic had a part in this as people avoided mass transit, along with things like better technology. The rapper and singer Drake is making history this week on the Billboard music charts. Right now, his surprise full-length album, Honestly Nevermind, is in first place on the Billboard 200 Albums ranking. That's his 11th album to top the chart, putting him on the same level as artists like Barbara Streisand and Bruce Springsteen. As if that wasn't enough, his new song, Jimmy Cooks, is on top of Billboard's Hot 100 Songs tally. That's his 29th top five hit. And with that, he ties a record set by the Beatles for the most songs ever in the top five. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, this podcast is sponsored by Rothy's. If you have some summer travel coming up like I do, then you'll love having Rothy's shoes on hand. They're perfect for commuting and traveling. They're crazy comfortable, almost like a slipper. So whether I'm wearing them with yoga pants or a maxi dress, I don't have to worry about my feet hurting. And they're stylish, the kind of chic where everyone tends to notice them. And they can be dressed up or down, which is another reason they're great for travel. One pair of shoes for multiple outfits. Plus, Rothy's takes sustainability to the next level. All of their products are knit with thread made from plastic water bottles. They've repurposed about 125 million water bottles so far. Your new favorite shoes are waiting. Discover the versatile styles you can wear absolutely anywhere and get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash newsworthy. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S, rothys.com slash newsworthy for $20 off your first order. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, how many colors are there in a rainbow? You can answer the question and play along with us on Instagram. Find and follow us at NewsworthyPod and look for the trivia quiz in our Instagram stories today. As for last week's trivia question, how long do elephant pregnancies last? The answer is 22 months. And that's the longest pregnancy of any living mammal. It's partly because they're so big and so are their babies. But it also has a lot to do with brain development. Scientists say elephant brains are similar to human brains, except they're about three times as large as ours with three times as many neurons. When elephants do finally give birth, their babies are pretty mature. They can stand on their own in their first minute on Earth and can start walking within one to two hours. It just takes a couple of days before they join the rest of the herd. Usually, elephants are only pregnant with one baby at a time, but about one to two percent of elephant births are twins. By the way, the animals with the shortest pregnancies are Virginia opossums. They are only pregnant for about 12 days. Well, thank you so much for listening today. We will be back with another news roundup tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 